It always feels good when you are appreciated. SLT Non-Stop Broadband. Free loyalty data added as you stay connected. Link at the time of the day, you will be able to get the money. Mom, what is it? Let's go. Tonight, Pursuit of Truth. Asad Saleh reprimanded by the Presidential Commission of Inquiry probing Easter attacks over holes in his story. Nay to naysayers. Central Bank Governor Professor W.D. Lakshman defends government's relief package and tells the business community to ignore the fear mongers and get on the development train. I assure you, backed up all information. The times before us are promising by the disaster mongers. No end in sight. Another from MP Ranjan's cash off recordings contradicts his own comments in Parliament. Watch this space. World watches on as the novel coronavirus claims more lives. All that and much more coming up on First at Nine this Wednesday, the 22nd of January 2020. From Ada Derana, this is Ada Derana First at Nine. Pace scene making cut winner. Anti jaw mouthwash samaging and a close up gel lekka story ek start karana. Hi. Hi. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to First at Nine. I'm Dhammi Kekanayak. Let's start with your local stories. Former Western Province Governor Asad Sali was ordered to appear before the Presidential Commission of Inquiry probing the Easter Sunday attacks late last afternoon. The former governor was warned on numerous occasions during the six-hour-long questioning for disrespectful and derogatory language used to address the bench following the highlighting of discrepancies in his prior and current statements recorded. Former Governor of the Western Province, Azad Saleh, appeared before the Presidential Commission of Inquiry probing the Easter Sunday terror attacks yesterday. During the proceedings, Saleh was cautioned on several instances by Chairman of the Commission, Justice Janaka de Silva, over discrepancies in his statements and was also given a stern warning for disrespectful outbursts and his derogatory addressing of members of the Commission. At the outset, Salih stated that although he had exposed Zahran Hashim's activities as far back as 2017 at a media briefing, no action was taken in this regard by the government at the time. The Commission's first line of questions were with regards to a previous statement provided to the Parliamentary Select Committee by Salih, where he had claimed that he was only made aware of an impending attack a week prior to the 21st of April by means of an intelligence document that had also highlighted Zahran's name as the chief suspect. The document was allegedly provided to him by his personal security officer. In addition to this, he had also told the select committee that a meeting was held between Defence Secretary Hemasiri Fernando, Chief of National Intelligence Sisira Mendis and State Intelligence Service Head Nilanta Jayavardhan in this regard. The bench then pointed to discrepancies in the version of events provided to the Parliamentary Select Committee and the version revealed to the Commission where Sully claimed to have only seen the document one day prior to the attacks, with the alleged meeting having taken place after them as well. These facts were then placed on official record, with the Commission warning the ex-governor against making false statements. The Commission also warned Sully over his inappropriate and disrespectful language when addressing the bench during the proceedings. Commission Chairman Justice Janaka de Silva ordered Sully to address the bench with respect and warned him that continued failure to do so could result in severe punishment. Sully then tendered an official apology to the Commission members. The bench also warned Sully against making statements critical of its investigations and activities and reminded the former governor of the extent of the powers vested in it. The bench revealed that although official requests had been submitted to intelligence agencies immediately following the commencement of its investigations on the 21st of September 2019, the said documents had not been forthcoming until the November 16th presidential election. 
Now, the organization dubbed Singhale challenges the statement made by MP Ranjan Ramanayake in Parliament when he said that former judge Padmini Ranamaka and her son faced threats in an attempt to justify his conversation with the then sitting judge. Addressing a media briefing today, General Secretary of Singhale played another recording of an alleged conversation between MP Ramanayake and former judge Ranamaka to media, saying it proves that the claim of threats is an utter fabrication. Padmini Ranavaka Minusurtumi then Tamam Musim Piriagana Hamarai, Katayutu Karapu Akare, Prada Kotas at Gila Columbia, Piliganama, Abe Ranjan Ramanaiko, Gida Vasidu Sakarana, Padmini Rana Beer and Gomadu Sakarane, Ayata, Ayagi Daruata, Tarjani Luna, Ibagim Maranti, Babio Gatin Vakila, Nati Prasnia, Kuadakan, Ranjan Ramanaiku Sakarana, Eusakri Matuli, Ranjan Ramanaika, Tekamakatakan, Padmini Ranavaki, Hanta Pataling Tam Pedili, Eka Itam, Patapal Buruakila, E Patapal Buru and Me, Hanta Pating Tam Pedili. Padmini Ranavaki and Mariputa to what Matawa Prasnak Nam, Emma Batuma Burukian, Epa Batuma Paris, Mink Katagan and Gilagan. Hello, then Mama Mama Kiana, Hodavadi, then I could get a context the Aganda, then Kaida Kataka, like among Hunter Pora Dala, where they had to a foundation nigger. Mount Gua Metumia, Metumia Tamai, Moraesla, the Oshiran Kuratala, Miyaki, the Valkarati, Metumia Bayana to Miyakal, Anil Vanil, Mumme, Silla, Pana, Kunuhar Pemiata, Miyavali, and the Kunuhar Pemiata, Miyavali, and the Kunuhar Pemiata, Miyavali, and the Kunuhar Pemiata, Meanwhile, MP Ranjan Ramanaka made yet another appearance in Parliament today. He was, however, accused of failing to follow through on his word, where he promised to submit several audio recordings of his to Parliament yesterday. The MP, however, pointed to his incarceration as reason for this failure. ඒ දවසේ ගරු නියෝජ්‍ය කතානායකතුමනි කතාවේ දී තුමා කිව්වා සභාගත කරනවා කියලා ඒ හඬපට සාක්ෂි සියලු දේවල්. ඒ නිසා මම ඔබතුමාගෙන් දැනගන්න කැමති මේ වන විටත් එවැනි දෙයක් සභාගත කරලා තියනවද සාක්ෂි මොනවාද දීලා තියනවද මොකද නැත්තම් මෙතන පාර්ලිමේන්තුවේ සිටි සහ නොසිටි බොහෝ දෙනෙක් අපහසුතාවයට පත් වෙලා තියෙනවා. මට තේරුණේ එතුමා ස්වාධීනව තරඟ කරන්න ඡන්ද ලබා ගැනීම අරමුණින්ද සාක්ෂි නැතුව අද පාර්ලිමේන්තුවේ සියලු දෙනා ඒ ප්‍රහාර එල්ල කරේ කියන සැකේ තියෙනවා. 122ක් පමණ වෙන මගේ සංවාද පට තමයි දැනටත් පාවිච්චි වෙන්නේ හැමතැනම. ඒවා Policy vising, hard disk eka, laptop eka, eto kote hard disk satak, laptop eka, mage phone hatra. E e deke phone hatra kud gatta. Eto kote mama dengi ni remand bandra aga aga tuva. Mage sangyutta pati ekstra banko ka locker eke tiyeno. Mata elite ande vidhya kne. Mage inda lekam kene batat meet ke bahan ke regime, rajapaksh regime karke no. Kulang geval lo tano. Mata eka backup karla. Record Kerkan Vidyakne, Andu Hangapu, Ekan Andu Tawasivin, Hantapata, Tatiki Piak, Adabara, the Ohio Isla, Magipunda Sahayoga, the Commissometer, it is Panchawa Kerlane, Eva give a Singapore or Gilatino, like a backup Kerkan, it is Natu, Mamma Elihitian, Mamma Dang Vedaker like another dinner, Namu Mamma Dang, I tend to Kudu Azul, Namu Mang Ada, Magalekam, the Antabar, the Latino, Dangaka, Patika the Kirim, Sidu Emin Pautino, Mamma Putumagi, Lima Kerno, Metumata, Vishesh, Avasara Karidin, Banko Tagile, Patika the Karabu, Sangavala. Then <laughs> 
UNP MP Dr. Jampati Vikramaratna today relinquished his parliamentary seat by way of resignation. It was revealed in parliament that the MP had given his letter of resignation with effect from the 21st of January. When asked about the cause behind the decision, Vikramaratna told Adhaderna that a personal matter led to his resignation. His contribution, he contributed heavily to the 19th Amendment to the Constitution. However, he later criticised it. Vikram Ratna also served as a member of the Parliamentary Select Committee, which probed the Easter Sunday attacks. Moving on with other local stories, with a resolution to the United National Party's leadership crisis nowhere in sight, some MPs loyal to opposition leader Sajid Premadas insists that Premadasa will, in one way or the other, lead them into the looming general election. UNP MP Lakshman Kiriela, meanwhile, also insisted that it is high time the matter is brought to a resolution as people have started to level justifiable criticism at the party for being distracted from addressing public concerns. නැති ඇත්ත වශයෙන්ම අපි දේශපාලනඥ ජෝ හැටියට අපි තනතුරු පස්සේ එළවන්නේ නරකයි. අපි තනතුරු පස්සේ එළවන්නේ ගියොත් අපිට ගමනක් නැහැ. පොත් අපිට දැන් චෝදනා කරනවා ජනතා ප්‍රශ්න ගැන කතා කරන්නේ නැතුව මේ තනතුරු පස්සේ අපි එළවනවා කියලා. ඒකේ ඇත්තක් තියෙනවා. රනිල් සජිත් කරු ඒ සිළු දිරාම එකට හිටගෙන වැඩ පිළිවෙලක් හදන්න ඕනේ ජනතාවට. ඒකයි වැදගත්. මිනිස්සු හරිය මොකද්ද දැන් විපක්ෂයේ වැඩ පිළිවෙල? මම අනුමත. සංදානේ අනිත් පක්ෂයේ නායකයෝ දැන් සජිත් ප්‍රේමදාස වහන්සේ අතරට කියන මන්ත්‍රි කණ්ඩායම පිළියාරක තියෙනවා කණ්ඩායමක් විදියට. आशीर्वाद्यालय State Minister of Power Mahinda Nanda Lutgamege assures that public assures the public that is that no defeated candidates will be allowed into Parliament through the National List in a President Gotabe Rajpaksha-led government. Meanwhile, Minister Roshan Ranasinghe uh, dared the SLFP to contest independently, predicting that they will not be able to garner even five seats at the forthcoming parliamentary election. Representatives of the governing party expressed their opinions regarding the upcoming general election. <laughs> प्रधान कारण मैत्रीपाल सिरसेन हिटपु जनाधिपत्म श्रीलंका ऐतिहास पक्ष सभापत्म इधर महामति वर्ण यदि अपेक्षक वशेंग श्रीलंकाटे කියපු ශ්‍රී ලංකා නිදාස් පක්ෂයේ නායකයෝ පිළිබඳවත් අවබෝධ කරගෙන තියෙනවා. මේ අය කොහොම හරි සමහරු පාර්ලිමේන්තුවට රිං ගන්න හදනවා 20යි 25යි සජිත් එක්ක දෙවනි කුමන්ත්‍රණය ආරම්භ කරන්න. පැහැදිලිව කියනවා ශ්‍රී ලංකා නිදාස් පක්ෂය වෙනම තරඟකරොත් මේ රටේ ආසන පහක් ගන්න බෑ. 
We'll be back with more news on the other side of this break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching First at Night. Now, following the announcement by the Speaker yesterday that the controversial Central Bank Forensic Audit Report on the bond scam was to be released in Parliament for perusal by MPs, there was concerns expressed that the report in its entirety may not be accessible. UNP MP Harsha De Silva claimed that the report released on a CD did not contain certain annexures and requested that the entire report be published on the Parliament website. These concerns were raised by State Minister Kanchana Vijayasekara, who revealed that there were serious suspicions that some parts of the report containing details of financial transactions of certain parliamentarians, including phone calls, had been taken out. He also warned, that, warned the Speaker that this would give rise to the blame being placed on the government and echoed calls for the entire report to be made available for debate to proceed on its contents and the truth to be revealed to the public. Now with the recent inclement weather patterns taking a breather in the past month, there are signs that the high prices of food items experienced in recent times are normalising. State Minister of Internal Trade and Consumer Welfare Anura Priyadarshaniyapa today engaged in a visit to 4th Cross Street in Petta, where he observed the variety of essential food items and their current retail prices. State Minister of Internal Trade and Consumer Welfare Anra Pridarshan Yapa visited 4th Cross Street in Petta for an inspection of current prices of essential food items. The State Minister observed a sharp decline in prices of commodities such as onions, potatoes, rice and canned fish. He added that the public can expect a further reduction in prices, with news of Indian market also stabilising further the benefits of which will be felt in the local markets in the coming weeks. We came for a tour in the Swath Cross Street to understand the prices available in the market. So now you can see big onion prices have come down, even uh, potatoes prices have come down, and even red onions prices or red onion also have come down. Canned fish also has come down. So you can see we can see a marked difference compared to a few weeks ago. And now, and we have now uh, realized that Indian market also will open us because they will also have a bumper harvest during this time. So in the coming weeks, we hopefully we see that most of the items prices will come down. That's a great sign. So why we wanted to show you the exact uh, market situation in this particular segment of the market. Now, entrepreneur Rohan Fernando has been appointed as the new chairman of the national telecommunications provider Sri Lanka Telecom. Fernando counts over 40 years' experience in the tea sector, developing, promoting and marketing the Ceylon tea in all its variants in the global markets. Prior to founding his own company, he has served on the Colombo Tea Traders Association as a member. He has previously functioned as the president of the National Chamber of Exporters in 2008 and 2009. He is the former chairman of the Tea Exporters Association of Sri Lanka, one of the directors at Sri Lanka Tea Board, and he's a council member and a management committee member representing the board of the National Chamber of Exporters of Sri Lanka. The government's multi-purpose developmental task force is set to commence employment interviews from the 26th of February. The President's Media Division said that the move aims to provide employment opportunities to 100,000 low-income families. The interviews, commencing from February 26th, will be conducted over five days at Divisional Secretariats and other public places designated by the Divisional Secretary. In the backdrop of the Moody's ratings agency predicting recently that the government's SME sector debt moratorium may not live up to its expectations if domestic conditions remain weak, Central Bank Governor Professor W.D. Lakshman today defended the stimulus package. 
The former academic recently appointed to the top post of the country's highest monetary authority called for increased private sector participation in the country's growth push and assured a gathering of the country's business community that in spite of the disaster mongers around, data and analytics insights show that the country faces promising times ahead. Governor of the Central Bank, Professor W.D. Lakshman, was the chief guest at the 61st Annual General Meeting of the National Chamber of Commerce of Sri Lanka held today. Delivering his address, the governor defended the government's recent SME relief package as a step in the right direction and called on the private sector to accept its position as the country's engine of growth and by engaging in public-private partnerships in infrastructure projects. Sri Lankan economy today is at a crossroads. From the late 1970s, we have been following a social economic policy model involving increasing liberalization of markets and an integration of the country with the ongoing processes of globalization. As part of this policy model, we were also trying to undertake structural and institutional reforms of the type that are generally recommended by international financial institutions. While this policy model had produced some good results, my view is that on the whole, it had produced a series of anti-development tendencies in the economy and politics. Dynamic policy strategies need to be introduced and faithfully implemented. I believe this is the commitment of the present government authorities. The government has identified the support needed by small and medium-scale enterprises from the banking sector. The most recent action on these lines is the special credit support scheme <coughs> extended to eligible SMEs thus complementing the fiscal incentives already announced by the government. The central bank issued a circular last week giving guidelines to licensed banks on the implementation of this scheme. These measures are expected to accelerate credit growth to the private sector in 2020 and beyond. The country is reorienting its growth strategy, highlighting and supporting the domestic capital and entrepreneurship to help develop a strong national bourgeoisie. With the collaboration of foreign capital and domestic state capital, private capital could take the country into the next level of growth. Playing its much hyped engine of growth role, the private sector, you ladies and gentlemen, I hope will work collaboratively with the public sector to achieve national goals. Private sector engagement in infrastructure projects allow for risk sharing. This is of particular importance given the tight fiscal constraints faced by the government at present. I call for your participation and collaboration with all stakeholders to enable Sri Lanka make its next big leap forward. I assure you, backed up by all information and analytical insights the central bank governor is privy to. The times before us are on the whole promising and good in spite of the disaster mongers around. The central bank has reported an increase in headline inflation for December 2019 to 6.2% compared to November's 4.1%. This has been attributed to a monthly increase in items in the food category along with the statistical effect of the low base that prevailed in December 2018. The year-on-year -year food inflation figure recorded a substantial increase to 8.6% in December 2019 while non-food inflation remained unchanged at 4.2%. The change in the National Consumer Price Index measured on an annual average basis showed an increase of 3.5% in December 2019 from 3% in the previous month. The monthly change in the December 2019 NCPI which was recorded at 1.6% was mainly attributed to the adverse weather that prevailed during the period which resulted in a spike in food prices. The prices of vegetables, rice, red onions, coconuts and fish recorded heavy increases during the period under review. Meanwhile, prices of items in the non-food category recorded a decrease or recorded decreases rather during the month owing to decreases of the items in communications, housing, water, electricity, gas and other fuels, health and miscellaneous goods and service subcategories due to the downward tax revisions introduced by the government with effect from the 1st of December last year. 
Core inflation, which reflects underlying inflation in the economy, decreased to 5.2% in December 2019 from 5.5% in the previous month of November on a year-on-year -year basis. However, annual average core inflation increased to 5.7% in December last year from 5.6% in November 2019. Now, Sri Lankan stocks closed higher by 0.46%, pushed up by heavy index-heavy John Kills holdings. The all-share price index closed at 27.09 points up at 5,941.42. The S&P SL20 closed at 25.37 points up at 2,851.60. Market turnover was a 918 million or 918.88 million i should say with 88 stocks gaining and 40 falling now here's a brief report on today's market performance uh, followed by a look at the currency in the bond market the secondary market yuka remained broadly unchanged while overall market witnessed thin volume buying interest stemming from both local and foreign counterparties was primarily centered on 2024 maturities at the weekly t bill auction the three-month bill was accepted at 7.55 up by five basis points while the six-month bill was accepted at 815 up by two basis points while the benchmark one year was accepted at 8.61 up by three basis points in the equity market, we witnessed a positivity with the announcement of tax changes introduced in the proposed Inland Revenue Amendment Bill, which is to be presented to the Parliament for approval. The boards concluded the day in green, persisting the positive sentiment for the second straight session on the price appreciations made in JKH and distilleries to witness a volatile movement reaching an intraday high of 5963 in the first hour of trading, followed by sideways movement, ultimately closing at 5941, gaining 27 points. Welcome back. This is First at Night. Now, the death toll from the deadly coronavirus in China has risen to nine with another 440 confirmed cases within the country. Authorities in China have urged people to stop traveling in and out of Wuhan, the city at the center of the virus outbreak. It stokes fears of further spreading in the lead up to the Chinese Lunar New Year that sees hundreds of millions of Chinese traveling to their hometowns across the country. Authorities also said that the country was now at the most critical stage of prevention and control of the coronavirus outbreak. The World Health Organization is set to hold a new conference today to determine whether the outbreak of the new coronavirus constitutes a global health emergency. There have been a handful of global cases with three in Thailand, one in South Korea, one in Japan, one in Taiwan and also one in the United States. Authorities in many countries, including Australia, Singapore, Hong Kong, Taiwan, the US, Russia and Japan, have stepped up screening of air passengers from China and particularly from Wuhan. Russia's President Vladimir Putin has appointed a new government less than a week after he engaged in a shake-up of Russia's cabinet. This led to the resignation of Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev along with his entire government. Following his resignation, Prime Minister Medvedev announced that the government was resigning to help facilitate the changes. Putin appointed 53-year-old former tax chief Mikhail Mishutsin with almost no political profile as the new prime minister. The new government renewal included a new economy minister and a new first deputy prime minister. Now, day four of the first test between Sri Lanka and Zimbabwe ended a short while ago at the Harare Sports Club. Angelo Matthews became Sri Lanka's first double century in five years. This helped Sri Lanka cut down Zimbabwe's first innings lead. 
Matthews reached his maiden double century moments before Sri Lanka declared on their first innings total of 515 for the loss of nine wickets. Niroshan Dikwella, Dananjay De Silva and Kusal Mendis also chipped in with half centuries each to strengthen Sri Lanka's lead. Zimbabwe started their second innings before play ended for the day. At the close of play, Zimbabwe were 34, the loss of no wickets. And that's it from all of us here at First at Nine. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.